What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I thought I'd just do a quick 3D scene walkthrough of this water simulation shot that I recently uploaded on our channel. I'll be doing a full tutorial on the water simulation part of this video. However, this specific video is just more of a scene walkthrough going through some of the concepts that I use to composite the different elements together. Anyways guys, here we are inside of Blender. The first thing that I did for this shot was of course import the 3D camera into our scene and add a 3D camera to our 3D environment. And I have some tracking markers here. I didn't really need to 3D track this shot. However, I found that using some of the scene setup tools here in the left side of the tracking tab tend to help out with a bit of the compositing process as it automatically sets up some of the nodes for us. So I did use a few of these tools here, but as you can see here, if I kind of scroll through our footage, it's just a very basic tripod shot. So no need to actually track it for a moving camera. Anyways, after importing our footage and adding it as our background, I uh, just lined up our 3D camera so that the perspective matches that of our live action shot here. So you can see the grid here kind of matches generally the perspective of our live action camera. And then I've also added some planes here to kind of recreate the general geometry of the shot. Um, and I'll get to this background plate here in a second. I'll go ahead and disable that. But after kind of generally aligning the camera to the 3D grid in our world here, I just imported this whale 3D model here. And it was already pre-rigged and ready to go, but I did need to animate it. So I just have a few different animation keyframes here. I'll just select all of our objects and you can see all the different keyframes that I've added here for the animation. And I just added a plane here as reference for our water at first, and then just kind of animating it coming out of where I thought the water would be according to kind of where I placed the plane here. So this plane here is just kind of where I imagined the surface of the water would be. So that's how I just did that very basic animation here. And then I turned this uh, whale geometry into a fluid effector with a uh, effector type collision. So that in the next step, when we added our fluid domain, it would actually create those splashes for the fluid simulation. So pretty basic animation here. I've just animated mainly the uh, body of the whale here. And then I just done some secondary animation on, you know, some of these minor arms here just to give it a little bit more of an organic look. You know, you can rotate around the body a little bit, but uh, pretty simple animation just coming out of the water there and back in. I think the main thing was just this right fin here. Tried to add a little bit of motion to that so it kind of hit the water like so. But anyways, pretty simple animation. The next thing I did was of course the fluid simulation itself. So I created a box for our fluid domain here um, that I wanted to simulate our fluids inside of. And then I also added a fluid flow object for the fluid itself. So this one right here is the fluid domain where the simulation resides inside. And then this uh, secondary fluid original flow geometry is the actual water within the domain cube. I just added those two objects here and then I started simulating inside of our smoke domain with some various settings here. And I've used Mantaflow for the simulation. I'll go ahead and turn on our simulation really quick here so you can see. So this is our simulation without any particles. I did 180 resolution divisions here. It definitely needs more in my opinion. However, it was uh, already starting to lag on my computer a little bit. I don't have the best specs for computer graphics and simulations, but I thought it was a pretty cool looking result regardless once all those particles were added. And this was actually my first time using Mantaflow for fluid simulation. Uh, I've used it a lot, of course, for like smoke and fire and everything, but it's actually pretty fun to use for fluid simulation. Essentially how it works is you bake your simulation in different steps. So I'll go ahead and disable some of these properties here. The first thing you do is you just bake your liquid here. Um, so you can choose kind of your simulation method and adjust a few of the settings here. I left it pretty much at its default settings and then just baked the simulation. And I'm not gonna play through it here because it takes a while to play back in real time here, but essentially you bake the liquid first then from that liquid simulation, you bake a uh, fluid mesh here, which then creates a mesh of that fluid. So the second step is creating the mesh from the liquid simulation. And in baking that mesh, you can choose how much you want to up-res your simulation by. And I up it by two. Of course, a higher up factor would give you more detail in your mesh. Of course, increasing your resolution divisions would give you more as well. Just a different kind of resolution, uh, if that makes sense. So this is the main resolution. And then if you want to kind of up your fluid simulation, you would use the mesh up factor when you bake your mesh 
using the liquid simulation data. But um, after you bake your mesh, then you go into your particle settings and you choose which particles you want to bake out in your simulation. I use the spray and foam particles. I didn't find it necessary to bake any bubbles since those are mostly residing under the surface of the water. So I wasn't going to actually see those very much. And you can also choose how much you want to up res your particles by. So if you up res your particles, you're going to get more particles and more detail from whichever particle systems you select here. And once you bake these under the particle system tab, you'll have different particle systems depending on the ones you've selected that you can then enable here. As you can see, if I select them on, now you can see that these particles are actually around our mesh, which is giving it a lot more detail. And I think the, the main one that was really needed for the shot was the spray particles. The foam did a little bit, but it's definitely not as prevalent in the scene here. As you can see, if I turn it off, there's a little bit of detail that it adds. The foam particles kind of reside on the surface of the simulation, whereas the spray kind of exists um, when something sudden hits the simulation or there's a kind of a violent burst, kind of like this whale is coming out of the water here. So the spray was definitely crucial and essentially how these particle systems work is after they're created by your fluid simulation you can then you know choose how to render out your particles so I've rendered them out as an object and you can change your scale and scale randomness and then I've just used an icosphere here instanced all over that particle system and I've just used a very basic white material for that icosphere so that it's kind of like a bubble or splash effect but uh, as you can see if I just go to rendered view really quick you'll see that it's just a bunch of white spheres essentially on our particle system and you know it's not perfect but I definitely think that with some more resolution divisions on the actual fluid simulation itself and maybe baking some more particles but actually making the particle size smaller. I have a feeling you can get some pretty photorealistic results. Of course that all kind of depends on the speed of the hardware in your computer so uh, Mantaflow can be a little bit slow in that sense sometimes but this is kind of what the simulation looks with those particles and um, I'll go ahead and turn those off for now but um, that's the general idea for the fluid simulation aspect. A few more things I did here. I wanted the simulated water material in our shot to have a similar look to the water in our live action shot. So what I wanted to do is actually simulate the reflections coming off the surface here. So I've just added this environment background plate for reflection. As you can see, if I turn that on, we're getting some realistic reflections off of the uh, water here. So essentially what this background plate is, if I go under our object properties tab here, you can see that under ray visibility, I turned the camera ray visibility off because I didn't actually want to render the plane, but I did want the plane to create some reflections on our water here. But if I turn it on just for the sake of this tutorial, you can see that I've just projected the live action shot onto this plane here. And then whenever we go to camera view, it's actually reflecting onto our water here. So there you go. That's how you can create some kind of realistic reflections there. It's not perfect, but with a little bit of compositing, I tried to blend it into the shot as best I could within that uh, day of working on this project. So yeah, that was definitely crucial in creating the realistic reflections off the water here. Another thing I wanted to do was extend the uh, area where the ocean was in our render. So essentially what I did is I just added a very basic plane to our scene and just overlaid it on top of our shot. I just added this in case the feather of our mask would extend further than the edge of our domain here. But uh, yeah, that's what we did for this foreground view layer. I also added some locusts to the composite with our Splatterfy add-on. So as you can see here, I just selected the locust checkbox and added a bug system to our scene. And I've actually added these bugs on their own separate view layer. So as you can see here, I have our foreground view layer, which contains our water simulation that we overlaid on top of our shot. And then our second view layer, as you can see, if I click here, contains our locusts. Um, you can see that some of the other elements are here too, but as you can see here, the collections containing the whale, the background, and the water simulation itself are all selected as indirect only. So whenever we actually render out this view layer, as you can see, they're actually not showing up in our render. Only the locusts are showing up in this specific view layer. So this is a super simple and effective technique you can use to isolate different elements in your scene. Uh, whatever elements you don't want showing up in a specific view layer, you can put them in their own collection and just turn on the indirect only and they'll only affect the objects you do want rendered indirectly. So anyways, just added these uh, locusts flying through our scene here. Super simple Boyd's particle simulation I added through Spiderfy, just flying by the camera. I have our locusts going after this empty here that I've animated going from left to right to give the locusts a little bit of variation. And then as you can see, if I go to viewpoint camera, you can see they're just flying by the camera nicely. And if I go to rendered view, 
you can see the locust in a little bit more detail here uh, pretty detailed asset up close anyway but uh, just flying by the camera a little bit of motion blur anyways but a nice touch in my opinion to add some life to the scene and uh, i also have a ground plane here that's set as a collision plane so that the locust particle system will avoid it and then also i turned the general color of our ground here so that the locust would be lit by the hdri in the scene our background projection that i showed earlier and then also would have some shadows from below just because we added this plane here that's also indirectly affecting our locust lighting so uh, that's pretty much it for our view layers just the foreground water simulation and the locusts and i'll go ahead and render out a frame here and we'll go into our compositor all right, so I've done a few things in the compositing process to blend our two different view layers together. This is our node tree setup here, and uh, it's a pretty simple node setup. If you're not familiar with node-based compositing, it might look a little bit complicated, but uh, I'll go through a few of the steps that I use to composite everything together. This top bit here is just our movie clip run through an undistortion and scale node as the background for our composite. Then this first alpha over node combines our movie clip with our fluid simulation and our uh, whale here. So as you can see here, everything on this node branch is applied to the whale. The first node here is our foreground render layer containing our whale and fluid simulation render. So as you can see, if I add another viewer node here and use it right here, this is what our render looks like without uh, being composited into our shot. So I've run this render through a few different nodes here. I experimented with a blur node to blur it into the background a bit. I added a little bit of glare with this node just to blend it into our background sky. Then I played around with the curves as well just to make sure that the levels matched our live action shot generally. And then I've also added a color balance node here. And this was mostly to blend in the general color of the CG fluid uh, on the base of our render here to our live action shot. You can sort of tell where our CG fluid starts here and I probably could have done a better job adding some more waves to this uh, CG water but uh, I decided to go with it for this specific example um, but you can see this without the color correction just for the sake of this tutorial you can see that it's not really blending into the shot as well without this color balance node. So once we add that in, it all kind of blends a little bit better. And finally, one of the most crucial aspects of combining this together into our live action shot was just adding a very basic mask uh, and that mask going into a set alpha node so that we uh, tell which part of our render to overlay on top of our footage and then feather that edge. So I've just gone to the masking tab here, created a very basic mask of where I wanted to add that uh, fluid simulation and you can see kind of the feathering edge around the uh, mask itself here and I've just used that whale mask node into a set alpha which creates that feathered mask blending into our shot and then finally I've just added a little transform node here to reposition it a bit better add a little bit of denoise and despeckling and uh, yeah finally overlaid that on top of our live action shot here with this alpha over node the second alpha overnode here is overlaying our locust view layer on top of our live action shot. As you can see, if I bring this one down to zero, you'll notice that the locusts disappear entirely. So I'll bring that back up to one and go through some of the effects that we've added to our locust view layer here at the bottom. So I've just uh, run our locust view layer through a blur node with a little bit of bokeh blur to blend it into the shot a bit better. Then I've added a little bit of color balance to it, cooling off the shadows, adding a little bit of warmth to the midtones and the highlights. And then I've just adjusted the RGB curves and uh, readjusted the general position with a transform node here. And uh, you can see without the color correction, I'll just bypass all these nodes here. This is what it looks like without all those nodes. You can kind of see some of the low samples here and it hasn't really been adjusted appropriately. But uh, once we start adding this blur in, you can see the blur kind of helps hide those samples. And I'll add in the color balance kind of darkens it a bit and uh, makes it a little more similar to the color of our live action shot. Then I add a little RGB curves, darkening it down a bit, I think, just like so. And then finally just repositioned it with the transform node here, just so it's a little bit more down and further into our scene so we can actually see it a bit better. Finally, in Adobe Premiere where we did our editing, I added a little bit of color correction over the entire shot and then added a little bit of film grain to bring everything together. But anyways, guys, I'll do a full tutorial on this uh, hopefully later this week. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short visual effects walkthrough. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to see next, and I'll see you next time.